Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Podoska, founder of the Brand Star Academy, where I teach entrepreneurs how to be powerful, profitable speakers and create their own celebrity personal brands. Welcome to this episode of Thrive, how to create sustainable success with my guest, Chris Salem. Chris Salem is an international speaker, an award-winning author, a life and business strategist, and an advocate for wellness, whose mission is to help career professionals and entrepreneurs learn how to create true, sustainable prosperity and success and maintain their wellness. This was such a great conversation because so many times entrepreneurs and, and high achievers, they push and they drive and they hustle and they burn out. So Chris's mission is really to help people understand what principles, what discipline, what habits need to be put in place to create the kind of foundation that you need to have balance, to have joy, to have success, and to have sustainable success that will keep going on and on so you don't have those cycles of going up and down. So on the show, we talk about what, what those habits are. What is the discipline that you do need to put into place so that you can rely on it to build that muscle? We also talk about why your health and your wellness is so, so important to your financial success. And we talk about how do you stay in the solution? How do you keep in that positive frame of mind and not stay in the problem where so many people live? Chris has his own transformational story of going through struggles and turning it around to really create his own success. And he most recently co-authored a book with Jack Canfield of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, The Art of Success. So he is really moving and grooving and helping a lot of people with his mission and reaching more and more people on more and more platforms. So I really hope you enjoy his expertise, his heart, and all the great information that he shares today on Thrive. It was so fun to have him. I also want to tell you about a big announcement that I have, which is I am going to be relaunching my Stage Ready Masterclass this April, April 28th and 29th in Boston, just north of Boston. The Stage Ready Masterclass is a two-day event where we get on stage. My tagline is creating powerful, profitable speakers, and this is where it happens, on the stage in the theater. This is a two-day event, a hands-on masterclass, interactive masterclass where I am professionally coaching the participants on stage to help them become better performers, to own their bodies, to know how to use the space, to be confident, to create messaging that is deep and compelling and powerful, and to help them create a presence that's magnetic, and also help them understand how to sell, how to really sell with authenticity and integrity and still close sales and have your message be on point. This is so much fun. I've done it before in the theater. We get you up, we get you acting, we get you moving, and we get you rock star confident. By the time you leave, you are going to feel like you can really own your space next time that you speak. So if that speaks to you, if you're someone who wants to be more, do more speaking, or maybe you're already speaking, but you know you need to up your game, you need more polish, you need to know how to deliver a story in a way that's emotional, but also helps you articulate your value, if that speaks to you, I'd love to have you. You can check it out. Go to heatherpaduska.com forward slash stage dash ready dash master dash class. It sounds kind of like a rap stage dash master. I don't know. But anyway, I would love to have you there. Just go check it on out. And I hope you also enjoy this episode of Thrive. 
Hi, I'm Heather Podeska, star maker to entrepreneurs who want to become powerful, profitable speakers and create their own celebrity personal brands. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You're in for high value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. And I'm so lucky to have my special guest here today, Chris Salem. Chris Salem is an accomplished world-class speaker, life and business strategist award-winning author and a certified mindset expert who partners with entrepreneurs, corporate business leaders, and sales professionals to teach them how to have sustainable success by resolving the root cause to their mindset barriers. His book, Master Your Inner Critic, Resolve the Root Cause, Create Prosperity, addresses these barriers and went on to become an international bestseller in 2016. Chris also co-authored the recent edition, Mastering the Art of Success, with Jack Canfield. And his weekly radio show, Sustainable Success, is part of the Voice America Influencer Channel. Chris, welcome. Thank you so much for being Heather, here. It's a pleasure to be here. Wow, that was a mouthful. How did you <laughs> accumulate such an impressive resume? Well, it's really centered around the message, really, you know, just empowering others that they can be their better self. And by becoming their better self, they can offer more value to, to others that create a better world. And I figured, you know, the best way to do that is to really cover all different bases in terms of media channels to convey that message. So to become a, someone who has sustainable success, what is the first thing that you really focus on? Because you have a couple of different areas where you're an expert. Absolutely. When we look at sustainability, that when you think about sustainability, that means that's a long time, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much consistent throughout most of your life. But in order to get there, there has to be certain types of habits and disciplines that you have to have established and that you have to engage in every day. But what's most important with doing that is you have to keep yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. So it requires constant maintenance coming out of your comfort zone. But the people who, who truly have sustainable success are those that operate within the solution rather than the problem. Well, many of us uh, manage the problem, but if we wanna have that sustainability, it's best to really address the limited beliefs that keep us stagnant so then we can find the solution within inside of us to operate at a sustainable level. So say a little bit more about that. What does it mean to stay in the solution? So the solution is, is we all ha have, the, we are the problem, we are the solution. It all comes with inside of us. Mm -hmm. But if we have limited beliefs or certain barriers, it's gonna be very difficult or slim to none to really operate within the solution. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, we have to go and find the root cause to those barriers or to those limited beliefs. Mm -hmm. And there's a process to go about doing that. Mm -hmm. And once you're able to truly release the root cause and develop the right types of habits, skills, and disciplines to find your solution, which is tied to your true purpose, is when you'll be on the path for sustainability. That's so interesting. So let me ask you, do you feel like there, that that root cause really goes away? Do people resolve it or is it something that you manage? It depends on the individual. You can truly resolve it. And I'm not gonna say that life doesn't happen because life is always gonna throw curveballs at you, mm -hmm. but it's how you then are proactive to how to deal with it in a different manner. Mm -hmm. Because when you're operating from within the solution, in the moment, with mindfulness, mm -hmm. you're able to see opportunities within those trials in life. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we're managing the problem, we tend to get caught up in all the negativity with it. And in many cases, it actually derails people off their path towards what they're, what they're striving for. Yeah, I really like that. And I know that I've heard before, you know, what you focus on expands. Exactly. So if you're focusing on the negativity and the problem, you're perpetuating more of that. Absolutely. And so it makes sense that if you're focusing on some of these rituals. So um, you talk about rituals, both mindset rituals and health rituals. And how do those things go together? How are they separate? How do you see that coming together to serve somebody who wants sustainable success? Sure. Well, I'm a firm believer that, you know, what, you know, your personal life and your business are all in one. A lot of times people tend to put their personal life in one bucket, their business in another bucket mm -hmm. and treat it separately. But when you really think about it, when you look at your personal wellness, when I say wellness, not just physical wellness, but emotional wellness, they call it the eight pillars of wellness. If any of those eight pillars are out of balance, do you feel that they're gonna have an impact on your business in some way? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Will it have an impact on your relationships? Yes. And it's the same can be said with your business. If something is not going right with your business, 
Can it have an impact on the balance of your wellness? Absolutely, mm -hmm. as well as your relationships. But when you put them two together and be able to find the, ba uh, not a perfect balance, because there's no such thing, but strive for excellence to find somewhat of a balance there, then you're gonna be on the right path to having that sustainability with your life and business as one. Yeah, it's interesting, because one of the things that, because I have three kids, I have a business, <laughs> I have a show, and I think balance is a misnomer. Yes. I, I just don't think there's that's nothing. There's never gonna be perfect balance. So, so the way that I sort of think about it is having flow. Yeah. Between the, I don't, I didn't think of eight pillars, but flowing between the, I guess the pillars. Yeah. Would you say that that's a way of doing that? Or? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's just being aware of where you are. So it, like, if somebody's financially in debt or maybe not saving enough money, that's going to have an impact on your emotional well-being, and eventually that could have an effect on your physical well-being, mm -hmm. and then that affects your energy and your self-confidence and self-image and that can impact your business. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these things, people don't see that, how, they, how the dots are connected. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if you're conscious and being in the moment and be able to, in that moment, with certain tasks, be focused at that one task at a time, mm -hmm. you can begin to kind of do the best you can to get that into balance so it all begins to kind of flow together. The key is really being mindful and being in the moment with everything that you're doing, not living in the past or projecting into the future but being here right now with everything you do. And don't you think that that's incredibly hard to do now in our digital age? I mean, I know that when I'm on the treadmill, <laughs> I'm guilty of you know putting my podcasts yes. on, so I'm not like in my workout when you know because I don't always want to be in my workout yeah. in that moment because it's uncomfortable. Yeah. So how do you how do you talk about that distraction, that digital distraction? Well, there's distractions. There's always going to be distractions, mm -hmm. right? And especially in today's world with you know with social media and email yeah. Yeah. and. You know, people can just, you know, can get at you in any way that possible. Mm -hmm. But it really comes down to, again, you making that choice. Because mm -hmm. we always have a choice. And if we decide that we need to tune it out, we can. So the key is you have to really identify what's really important to you. Mm -hmm. What are you striving for? How do you want your life and business to be? And to begin to put those daily habits and pr uh, principles and disciplines together that are going to meet that, that target. Mm -hmm. So when I'm focusing on different tasks, Social media in, in, in my email, yes, I will look at it, but I will tune that out for the time being when I'm focused on a certain task. So I'm always looking at what's going to be the most productive task, most important, that's going to impact my business, my well-being, and my relationships first, and then the least important as we go on throughout the day. Or depending upon maybe there's certain periods of day that you have to address the most important things. So you, it really comes down to the strategy, how you design your life and what your desired outcome is. So you said relationships, business, and what was the third one? Your, your wellness. So among those three, is there one that takes priority? Always your wellness. Your wellness. Because without, without your wellness, you know, having, you could have all the money in the world, but mm -hmm. without your wellness, the wealth doesn't mean anything. Right. Because you can't enjoy it. And the whole idea is that, um, you know, I came up with a term called prospenure. Mm. And this woke me up out of a dead sleep about four years ago, and I eventually had it trademarked. But the whole principle of being a prospenure is that you don't have to be an entrepreneur to be a prospenure, mm. but it's somebody that really, you know, really believes in that, that the daily habits and disciplines and behaviors that we engage in every day, putting our wellness first, once they're in alignment with our wealth, wealth principles, is when we can experience true prosperity. Mm -hmm. And that's what prosperity is all about. It's not all about how much money you have, but it's about putting your wellness first and finding as best as you can the balance that with your wealth principles so that you can have that sustainability. So having freedom to, to have the life you want, spending more time with family, you know, you know, taking care of you yourself physically and emotionally and spiritually, and really, you know, developing, cultivating those relationships that are important to you. That's a true prosperous life. That sounds Sounds prosperous, sounds amazing. <laughs> so where do you think most people get off? They're, they get off the, you know, off the wagon, off the track. Where, where do you think they struggle the most, especially around wellness? Yeah, so what, what it comes down to, when wellness is always a mindset thing. It always mm -hmm. starts, but a lot of times people will say, well, I'm 50 pounds overweight or I don't have a lot of energy. It, and it's because they think it's because of the food they're eating. And yes, that is the case. Maybe they're not eating well or they're not exercising enough. But really before, if somebody is truly gonna address that and that's gonna be important to them, it starts here mm -hmm. first, then what you eat, and then how you exercise that order. A lot of times people put the exercise first, then the nutrition second, and then mindset has no part in it whatsoever. But again, that's managing the problem, mm. not operating within the solution. They're not solving the problem to find the solution 
to whatever their desired, what their desired outcome is. Can you give us an example of what you mean by mindset for somebody who mm -hmm. maybe doesn't isn't in you know a coaching situation? Yeah. What what does mindset really mean? Like if you say you have to put your mindset before exercising, before eating, what would that even look like? So let me tell tell you a little, little bit about my my schedule each and every day, and this will kind of make that way people can really understand. So when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I make my bed. Now, my wife, Maria, who you've met. <laughs> I was like, can you come to my house? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's still sleeping. She sleeps the next two hours, a little bit two hours more than I do when uh -huh. I wake up. I wake up very early, yeah. 4.30, 5 o'clock in mm -hmm. the morning. But I make my side of the bed. Now, I don't do it because I want it to look neat. That's not the whole premise of uh -huh. why I'm doing it. It's really about setting the mindset that I'm doing something that's organized, mm -hmm. that's going to position my mindset to do other things during the day that are going to be productive mm -hmm. and efficient. Mm -hmm. Then I go down and I find a quiet spot in my home, which is usually a regular spot in my office, and I meditate for 20 minutes. Now, I've been doing it for a long time, so I'm able to get into that rhythm of meditation where I really get to the theta wave state, where I'm able to get, you know, have my subconscious mind talk to my conscious mindset. And then soon after I do that, I journal, and I write down exactly what, how I'm feeling and what comes to mind mm. during that time. So then I can go back and look at, you know, like look at myself like as if I was a third person, somebody else looking at myself. Mm -hmm. And I could keep track of where my mindset is. Then I go work out, get a workout, resistance training, a little cardio. I come back, eat a healthy breakfast, and then I tackle the day with the most important tasks that are going to best serve my customers, my business, and my, my personal life. I like that. And you think that the, that's mindset. That's really good because it's getting everything aligned and yeah. and I think sort of sweeping the dust away. It's like the whole premise of mindfulness is what why you should be meditating and journaling for mindfulness to get you in the moment so you're not in the in the past, you're not in the future is that it's going to create clarity. So you just said it. Clutter. I mean, you can look at somebody, I can look at somebody's car and they can have junk all over the place or someone's home and there's clutter all over the place. 99% of the time there's clutter in their mindset mm -hmm. because you can see it. But when you're able to kind of declutter your home and declutter your car and declutter this, most important, that's when things begin to become more clear. You develop more clarity. You're able to see more opportunity within the struggle that you may be in at that time. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to see more opportunities that you can capitalize on that you wouldn't have been able to see with the clutter. Now as a result of having clarity, then you're also able to be more, become more decisive. Many people tend to waffle with their decisions. Mm -hmm. They tend to overanalyze, overthink, and that's because of the clutter. Mm. But you're becoming more decisive, you're able to take action more quickly. You're able to make a, a, a decision right on the spot, and boom, you just go straight forward with it. And then as a result of that, you're more likely to follow through with your commitment, whether it's to yourself, most importantly, and then also with others, whoever you're serving. So those are the three most important attributes of mindfulness, clarity, decisiveness, and follow through. Yeah, I love that. I don't know who said it, but one of my favorite quotes is, when the path is clear, execution is successful. Yes. It sounds like Confucius, but I don't know. <laughs> Probably read it on a cereal box somewhere. I don't really know. But I wanted to get back to the clutter part of yeah. it because I think that um, people do struggle with the picture they're t trying to create, that they don't have that clarity of what they really want. Yeah. Why do you think the clutter is there to start with? Well, it's because, again, they're caught up in managing the problem. I mean, they're not living in the moment. Mm -hmm. So the past is creating the stress and fear. Mm -hmm. The anxiety exists in the future. So basically, they have race mind. They're going back and forth, and they're not in the moment. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the moment, you have the ability now to see things more clearer. And a lot of times, people don't have a very specific, detailed life and business strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I, I would totally believe that, yeah. But if you have a plan in place, being in the moment, not saying, okay, today I'm focused on these tasks. I'm not worried about what happened yesterday. I'm not going to worry about what happens tomorrow, right now. It's like, it's like putting money in a bank account, and then it just compounds and compounds. You still want to have a set time frame you know, in, in, where you want to achieve a goal. Mm -hmm. But every step of the way, you've got to be in the moment and just working on that and let it roll up to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. But once you start getting into the future and into the past, that's when people start to get uneven, they get the limited belief set back in, and a lot of times they get thrown off course. So do you, do you think that if you're in the, because one of the questions I have is when, what if I am in the moment today and I have an idea of what I want, but tomorrow I wake up and I'm in the moment and it doesn't match yesterday. 
Mm -hmm. Do you think that that happens? Or? Any, I mean, anything's possible, but the key is to get centered again, to get in the moment. Don't worry if for some reason you, need, you didn't finish everything that you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Pick up where you left off to get whatever has to get done, that task that's going to roll up to the next task, mm -hmm. that's going to take you closer to your end goal. But see, the key what people have to understand when, when it comes to sustainable success is while you want to be focused on the outcome, too many people are focused just on the outcome itself. Mm -hmm. And that's where the mistake is. It's to be focused on the process itself, mm -hmm. the journey. That's where the true success comes. That's where sustainability comes in. Because without being focused on the process, the outcome that you desire is usually not going to materialize or to the way you want it. Yeah, I, I love that. And I totally agree with that. This past summer, um, I decided to do a little challenge for myself. I did 100 videos in 100 days. Whew. Wow. <laughs> and our friend Tammy, our mutual yes. friend Tammy, also did a ch challenge recently. She said um, 60 live streams in 60 days. And I'm like, but tomorrow's Thanksgiving. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to commit to this. Mm -hmm. And I just made the commitment. And they're not perfect. Some of them are terrible. Like, it, but it, I just wanted to have that commitment. That's fine. You know, because not everything is going to be perfect. But in the long run, if you make that commitment towards whatever that end that end goal is, it's all going to come out to where, how you want it. Again, it's never, we're never going to have anything that's perfect. You're never going to have perfect balance. It's always striving for excellence, but being committed to the process every step of the way. That's where accountability plays, a, plays an important role. And there's not a lot of accountability in a lot of things that we do in our daily lives, including even in companies and in, in, in our business. Mm. We don't have enough accountability. So how would, you, how would you suggest that we change that culture? So the thing is, is that you know, when you implement something that's going to improve your skills, we need to really focus on really what we're good at. What are our strengths, not our weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Because too many times we tend to focus on our weaknesses and, and we try to develop those. But those are just not innate in us. So it's best to focus on what we're really good at, develop that even further so we can add more value. But every step of the way that we're keeping ourselves accountable or having a company if we work for a company or if we own the company, having some type of resource that's going to help us to keep accountable so we don't fall back into the past future and kind of get, you know, jump, hop off the wagon. Mm -hmm. It's always keeping us focused. The key is always to be out of your comfort zone and doing something that is, you know, you know make you, make you, make, allow yourself to grow. Because once we get comfortable, that's when all these things can set back in, especially if you have not resolved the root cause. So how did you get so smart about all of this? And, and why, why do you care about sharing this information? It's something I'm passionate. I mean, 20 years ago, my life was a complete mess. I mean, I had, uh, had been living, you know, you know, in the future, in the past, just shooting from the hip, uh, had no direction. I, you know, I had a good worth ethic, and that got me, you know, far enough where I was making great, good money. But the rest of my life was spiraling out of control. I could not keep a relationship for the life of me. Uh, even though I was working out, my wellness was not intact. I mean, I had a bad back. I, uh, I had back surgery at the age of 25. Wow. Uh, there was just a lot of things I was doing to my body that were, in the long run, probably would have killed me. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know where to turn anymore. I hit rock bottom. I struggled with addiction, so I had bouts with alcohol, drugs, sex, uh, food, you name it. There wasn't any particular one thing. But the true addiction that I struggled with was anger. Oh. And it was unresolved anger towards my father because I didn't have that connection with my father like you know, a, a, a son would like to have mm -hmm. growing up. So I was always looking for validation with other male figures, whether in the workplace, either as a boss or as a colleague, a uh, business partner. And even in many cases, even the women I was dating, I mean, they be ended up becoming my father. Mm -hmm. And they would disappoint me. And I would get angry. And so because of that anger, I would create situations, even though I thought the world was doing something to me, I was playing a part creating this so I can experience this anger over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't get out of my own way. Mm -hmm. So I decided to join a 12-step program, and I adopted Eastern meditation and philosophy along with that, and basically came up with my own process to find the root cause to what my problem was. I had a background in manufacturing. I was a purchasing, material, purchasing materials management major. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and they, we, I had studied the root cause analysis uh, in college. And when I looked at the, the root cause analysis concept, it was no different than what we do in our daily lives. Mm. No different. What the root cause does is it looks at where the bottlenecks are in the manufacturing process and, begin and, and, and looks to eliminate them so it can make the 
manufacturing process more efficient, more productive, and produce better quality products. It's no different in your personal life or your whatever business that you're in. Mm -hmm. The key is, is to look for the problems, re solve them, release them, and then find the solution to move forward. Again, never gonna be perfect, but if you keep yourself accountable, always sharpening the saw, developing your skills, fo focusing on your strengths, you'll be always one step ahead to keep up delivering at that quality, whether if it's in a business or in your own personal life. So how do you implement personal accountability? Like you really, you really want to lose 10 pounds and you're going along and you see something you really want to eat. How do you keep yourself, account like how do you keep that accountability for yourself to well, avoid temptation? Well, the thing is, is that a lot of times when people, you know, eat and they overindulge in something, a lot of times people think it's just, you know, hey, I just love the food. But it's just like somebody picking up a drink, right? They got to have that drink. But they, see, the root cause is, is much deeper than that. See, in my case, my anger was the true addiction. Mm -hmm. But me picking up a drink or a drug or overeating or an overindulging and becoming sexual promiscuous because I was, that was like the medicine to kind of escape. Mm -hmm. So those eating patterns and these desires to eat certain foods are ways to escape a certain pain mm -hmm. that either we are consciously aware of, but in many cases, we're also unconscious to it. We don't even know why. I think that's true. And I think a lot of people know there's a problem. Yes. They know they're not happy. They, they understand I might be, they might say I'm a nervous eater. I'm a bore. I'm, I over, I over shop because I'm yep. whatever. Comfort eating. Yeah. But they don't know why. They don't know why. So how, how do you, you know, does everybody have to go to, does everybody have to hit rock bottom? Does everybody no. have to go to a 12 step pro no. program? How do you start to get more clarity around Here's that? what I always say. If you're, if for some reason you're struggling, you feel like, why do I eat the way I do? Why do I keep picking up these cookies every day? I know I'm overweight, but I can't stop eating them. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep doing this, mm -hmm. and it's affecting my business, so what do I need to do? So you don't need to know what, what, what's causing it. You just need to know that you're not where you want to be. So you need I, to be aware. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Can and you then, say that again? I want you to yeah. say that again. You don't, have to, you don't yes. have to know what's causing it. You don't need to know what's causing it. You just need to know that you, you need to be aware that something is not working or where you want to be in your life, whether that's with your, your wellness, with your relationships, or in your business. Mm -hmm. Next is to accept where you are right now. To accept where you are, truly accept it, and then make a commitment that day that I'm going to move forward, and in due time, I'm going to follow a process that's going to allow me to find the root cause to what's been causing all of this. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what it is yet, but I will find it. And once I find it, I'm truly going to release it from every cell in my body. I'm not going to say that I forgive my father and the anger just goes away. you got to really mean it. Mm -hmm. And there's a process to go about doing that so that anger truly moves. There have been people that have done that. And truly, it's been the scariest thing they've ever done. And literally, within a week, they've lost 10 pounds. Wow. Because they were carrying this anchor of anger mm. or whatever that negative emotion was. It could be shame, guilt, or jealousy, envy. And that, that, that addiction or that, that motion was almost like a, like a weight. Yeah. It, it was putting weight on their body. Yeah. And they were able to, they felt lighter, they felt more clear. It's then when you release that you're able then to find your true purpose, who you really are, and find the solution going forward and the right habits, disciplines, and behaviors that are gonna better serve you, whether that's losing weight, that's finding, you know, developing better relationships, or taking your business to a, a level that you never dreamed of. Hmm. I love what you just said because I think a lot of people, they get stuck in that place of why, like why is it like this? But you, the way that I understood what you just said is you don't have to know why, you just need to start taking some action. Absolutely. And even that like intentional action that you're gonna move forward that starts to allow some space for the answer to, I don't know, reveal itself or or yes. whatever, I don't know how you would say it. You're not forcing it. And I think a lot of times people feel like, well, I gotta get it done. I gotta, because you know, I've had people like coach, they'll ask, how long is this gonna take? And I'm mm. like, I can't tell you, it could take you two months, it could take you two years. Mm. Yeah, and that's, some, and that's something that I've heard you say yeah. before is that when you work with people, it's not like this, it's like sustainable It's success. a process. Yeah. I always tell people this is a process. No one's here to tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Mm -hmm. Only you can do that. Mm -hmm. You are doing the work, I'm the guide. Mm -hmm. I'm just the guy that's gonna help you keep accountable. But even when I'm keeping you accountable, I'm not gonna tell you what to do or tell you you didn't do something right. This is your life, this is your business. And if these are the things that you truly desire, you have always the choice 
to make that. So if any excuses get in the way, that's your excuses. It's no, it's not somebody else's. Yes, life can get in the way, don't be wrong, but there's always a choice to be made from that circumstance to get right back in the same path to move forward. Mm. And so that's why when you see people that have gone through you know, major adversity in their lives and their businesses, and to, and to have this success at, on all fronts is because they had that right type of mindset. Mm, that's that's the difference. And those people are no different from you and I or anybody else in this world. We all have it within us to do that. You just have to make the commitment to embrace the process. Don't focus on the outcome, the process. Mm -hmm. Process, process. So we all have it within us, but sometimes we need a little help. Yes. So if we wanted a little help from you, how would we find out more about that? Well, the best place, you know, you can always, is always to reach out to me. You can look at my website, you know, ChristopherSalem.com, or, you know, you can reach out to me on my email at Chris at ChristopherSalem.com. That's always the best way to reach me. I'm very approachable, and I always, my, my, I love helping people. I mean, this is my purpose. This is why I'm here. My experience, what I went through, you know, with my father, is what I'm here to help people go through and overcome their own experiences, whether if it's very subtle or very traumatic, mm -hmm. that we could all have prosperous lifestyles if that's what we truly desire, whatever that means to you. You just need the, you know, the guidance and the steps necessary to, to go about doing it, but you have to do the work. Yeah, well, I'm sure anybody would be lucky to have you because I think you are very approachable. And I also think that when somebody has been through something personally, you have a deeper empathy for people who yes. are, are going through that process too. Yes. And we're all here to help each other. Absolutely. So, do you think that um, everybody has purpose? Everybody has a purpose. Everybody on this planet, even, even animals, we all have purpose here. And there's no coincidences. I mean, people come into your life for reasons. Mm -hmm. But see, when we have clarity, and we coming from the solution, we begin to see what that all means. Mm. But when there's clutter, and then you're caught up in the problem, and the addiction, or the, the emotion, you can't, there's blinders, you can't see, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta re-experience it again, until eventually you may get it. Unfortunately, there are many people go through their whole lives and never get it. Yeah. Well, that's why I think it's so important to have coaches and people that can be that objective voice that witness to help you through the and give you the tools absolutely so i really i just want to acknowledge you for for sharing your gifts to help people that way and, and sharing your heart and being vulnerable and open about your your journey and your process and then using your life to help other people become prospereurs absolutely so chris thank you so much for thank being you so here. much it's I'm, been great being here i've loved having you just one last question sure. i ask everybody what does it mean to you to thrive to me, to thrive is to always, again, be, be truly true to who you are, your authentic self. And to thrive is to just to touch as many people's lives as you possibly can, just empowering them to be who they are with your God-given gifts. And so, again, it's just being authentic and empowering others to find that within themselves. That's thriving for me. Well, you must be on fire thriving then. Yes. I love to thrive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you as well for all of you coming. And as always, until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, it's Heather again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Thrive. Every week we try to bring you people and information to help you change your life for the better, to grow your business, to expand your thinking, and to open your heart. If you did enjoy this content, I would so appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and review us. Let us know how we're doing. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. And if you found this information helpful or useful in any way, please share it on out. Let your friends and family know know about Thrive. And finally, if you'd like to know more about me, you can visit me at heatherpaduska.com. Until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes.